Dr. Jeff Masters, the co-founder of the Weather Underground weather site, uh, is on about how climate change induced record hurricanes and other natural disasters associated with climate are on. The, they're not just on their way. They're here. Check it out. Leave your comments. Ding the bell. Share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. And here with you on the line with us is the co-founder of the Weather Underground. Uh, worked with the NOAA Hurricane Hunters, a uh, regular contributor to YaleClimateConnections.org, and meteorologist Dr. Jeff Masters. Uh, the, his uh, Twitter handle, by the way, is Dr. Jeff Masters, uh, Dr. Jeff Masters, uh, spelled just like it sounds. And uh, Dr. Masters, uh, I, you know, the, the, the go-to uh, comment uh, a decade ago or thereabouts when I used to have people like Mark Morano on this program and debate climate science with them was always, well, you can never say that one particular storm was caused by global warming. Uh, you know, and every time you try to bring up any anything, is that signature of global warming becoming more and more obvious in things like, you know, Hurricane Delta and whatnot? It sure is. We're seeing an increase in the strongest hurricanes, and we're also seeing an increase in the rates of rapid intensification. Storms like Delta, which are, you know, going crazy, you know, it was a 35 mile an hour tropical depression and next thing you know is a category four hurricane those types of intensification rates are increasing and there is research showing that global warming has to be part of that so uh, you know right across the board we're seeing we're seeing global warming affecting our weather obviously we're seeing you know what's happening out I'm in Portland Oregon what's happening in the in the in the west you know with the drying out of the forests um, and and uh, and across the Midwest, you know, these violent tornadoes and these derecos, is it pronounced? The lines of, you know, multi-mile long lines of, of uh, you know, 150 mile, 130 mile an hour winds. Um, to to what extent, how, how do we get the media to start talking about it like this? How do we get, you know, I, I, local weather forecast, you know, things like that. They they all want to dance around it like they're afraid of being criticized for, for, for pointing this out. Yeah, there is a program that's designed to help TV meteorologists talk about climate change in their broadcasts. It's been going on for something like 10 years. In fact, I went to a workshop where... We brought in some top climate scientists and then a bunch of local TV meteorologists. And we went through, you know, here's what climate ch change says about how it's affecting the weather. And maybe here are some ideas you can use in your broadcast. And there's a group called Climate Central that puts out materials regularly showing for individual markets across the U.S., you know, here's how climate change is affecting the weather right now. So a lot of people are working on this. And I think it, it is better than it used to be. Uh, TV meteorologists now are less skeptical than they used to be about climate change. And you do see more stuff on air about climate change in the TV weather anyway. Yeah, it's a good step. I mean, we still have these fossil fuel billionaires funding, you know, these climate denier groups. It's just uh, absolutely breathtaking that that, that that is that that is going on. Um, where, where does this go, right? I, I mean, I think most people um, are at least semi-aware, if not fully aware, that over the last 20 years or so, our weather has changed, and we're seeing the consequences of that. How bad will it get, and how quickly will it get that bad? You know, it's an, an issue of shifting baselines. I mean, if the weather changes gradually enough, you're not realizing that it's changing, that, you know, Okay, it's bad, but yeah, it wasn't too bad 10 years. That was about the same 10 years ago. But anyways, yeah, I mean, it's going to go poorly for not just the U.S., but everywhere because our infrastructure is designed for the climate of the 20th century. And in the 21st century, the climate's more extreme. We've heated up the oceans. We've heated up the atmosphere. And that's energy. Energy is going to create more extreme weather events and more intense extreme weather events. So things like our seawalls are going to be inadequate because there's going to be stronger storms. And they're also going to be inadequate because the sea level is rising. So our infrastructure for flooding is inadequate as well. The, the levees inland and uh, flood control structures because we're seeing more intense rainfall events. So you're going to see a lot more damage due to these kinds of effects. And there's not going to be enough money for everybody who needs it to start adapting. 
we've got to get on board with doing a massive overhaul of our infrastructure sooner rather than later. And in particular, I'm always campaigning against no more development on barrier islands. We should not be developing in low-lying floodplains. We should be retreating from these vulnerable areas. Yeah. Um, back in the 90s, I, I wrote a book about uh, the relationship between fossil fuels and climate change. It was called The Last Hours of Ancient Sunlight. And, and back then, the biggest signature that we had, uh, the biggest indicator that we had that there was a climate crisis happening right in front of us, even though it was not in the news, was the insurance industry, specifically the reinsurance mm -hmm. industry. These giant companies that backstop the smaller insurance companies. Uh, Swiss Re had come out in, I think it was 95, because I, I wrote this book in 96, or published it in 96, uh, had come out and said, you know, we're anticipating that over the next couple of decades, we're going to see substantial risks for the insurance industry, and we need to be anticipating that right now. Um, is the insurance industry still playing a significant role in warning about the consequences of global warming because it's a direct threat to that industry? And uh, what other industries are starting to pay attention? Yeah, certainly the insurance industry is on board. They, they see their bottom line being affected by climate change every year. The number of disasters is going up, and how expensive these disasters are is also increasing at a very concerning pace. So, uh, yeah, I see people in the insurance industry all the time beating the drum on this. Uh, they're, they're very aware of the risks. And it's starting to be the greater business community as well is starting to understand the risks as well. Because, uh, for instance, in the real estate industry, it's happening now that properties along the coast that are low-lying are not going up in value as much as they used to and not as much in value as the neighboring higher elevation properties. So the real estate industry is taking notice of this. And it's going to, be, going to be a matter of time before some parts of the coast, there's going to be an all-out retreat where people are going to say, hey, you know, I can't pay these flood insurance premiums anymore. I'm going to move away. And it's going to be a real shock to cities that re are relying on those tax incomes to help fund the infrastructure. And it's going to be difficult to sustain the, the city's operations when you get people leaving en masse because, you know, A, their homes are getting flooded, and, and B, they're deciding to get out of there because it's no longer affordable to live by the coast. We're talking to meteorologist Dr. Jeff Masters, a regular contributor to Yale Climate Connections and the uh, co-founder of the Weather Underground, um, the weather site, <laughs> not, not, not the old anti-war site. Um, and and uh, <laughs> Dr. Masters, in the uh, little more than a minute that we have left, uh, I'm wondering best practices. What are other countries doing that we are failing to do that we should be paying attention to and considering emulating? Certainly educating the people. I mean, we have a very strong climate denial industry here in the U.S. You know, the uh, amount of lobbying money that's spent by fossil fuel companies for Congress is just astronomical. And other countries don't have that sort of organized des denier movements. And they're much more on board with, you know, doing sensible things. Certainly, we need to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, we can learn from the rest of the world. But basically, everybody but the U.S. is in that. So the sooner we get back in that agreement, the better. And, you know, we just need to both mitigate, which means, you know, reduce our emissions. And we need to adapt. We need to spend more money to defend our coasts where it makes sense to defend them against rising sea levels and not build in high-risk areas. I saw where uh, Venice, Italy, now is using a sea, uh, you know, a, a movable seawalls to stop the the flooding. Uh, do you see that coming to American cities? Oh, absolutely. Because in America, we react uh, reactively rather than proactively. We're going to have to defend Houston, Tampa Bay, New York City. All those places are going to need something like Venice has.